tall building is by its nature, it's insular, it's autonomous, it's sort of disconnected. But it really needs to become a more social participant. I have designed the building basically as a dialogue between the earth and the sky. And using two Chinese architects, a square prism, what they use to represent the earth, and a circular disk representing the sky. And so the de blending of those two geometries became the form of the building. So I started with a circular hole, the, the, the circle and the square being a, a, a familiar theme in Chinese architecture. And uh, all of it uh, seemed inevitable uh, until we made our first presentation in China. The headlines were, Japanese developer walks into Shanghai with a flag held high. And um, we had an emergency meeting in, in Tokyo with our client, Mr. Mori, and with the uh, deputy mayor of Shanghai. And at that meeting, I suggested, well, what if we put a bridge across the aperture Sort of symbolizing the joining of two sides, you know. And so we changed the aperture into not a square, but it's, it's a trapezoid, uh, which follows the lines of the building and, and takes on a different geometry. But frankly, uh, I like it better. Now they refer to the building as the bottle opener. <laughs> they couldn't have done that with my circle. At the time I started, and this was in the mid-90s, or early 90s, actually, the uh, Jin Mao Tower was under construction. Mm -hmm. So that was a fait accompli. And our responsibility was either to pick up on the character or the language of that building or to try to enable it to, to stand uh, somewhat uh, uniquely positioned in space and, and, and generate a language that was somewhat more specific to what I thought would be a connection to the sort of the, the, the ancient Chinese uh, philosophical mm -hmm. aspects of connecting earth to sky. But the, I'm always interested in creating relationships. And the re specific relationship I was interested in connecting to was the Oriental Pearl TV Tower. Oriental Pearl TV Tower was the tallest structure in the world. And it was sort of right on the, in the uh, curve of the river. And so if I could get a dialogue in space between the two buildings, there'd be sort of, sort of ur urban reciprocity there. Well, the intention was to create a building which became an urban stabilizer. The cacophony of the, the entire architectural ensemble on, on, on Pudong was, it was just mm -hmm. so great, you know, that it really needed something to sort of stabilize it. There were just, how many towers? There were 80 towers, the lowest of which was 40 stories in height. When we just started designing the building, and they were all different, every one a different language. No traditional fabric to connect to anything. This building needed to quiet things down and then have a presence and a, a sort of a, a sort of a, a sense of, 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 of nobility. Let's put that, use that word that yeah. uh, would stand the test of time. <laughs> it's only been ten years, but uh, it seems to be okay. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I think that. Uh, you know, a lot, a lot of what is being done with a tall building is, uh, is standing on the shoulders of, of uh, other accomplishments. And I've always said, I always said that the tall building was sort of in an embryonic stage of development anyway. You know, it's been around for 100 years, right? But in terms of how it performs as an urban participant, I think it's just sort of getting the, uh, an understanding of how to do that. The tall building is by its nature, it's insular, it's autonomous, it's sort of disconnected. But it really needs to become a more social participant. And I look at a tall building basically like a, an individual standing at a cocktail party. You know, a, 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 some guy who stands off in the corner uh, looking elegant but not communicating, you know, is just not going to make the connections that are necessary. And the, these buildings are so anthropomorphic in their, their uh, basic shape characteristics that they tend to have sort of that sort of identity. A good percentage of architects tend to want to do the museum or the special this or the special that. But you know, our cities are made up of these buildings. That's all they're made up of, frankly. I mean, there are a few unique other 
and, and getting a hold on getting a hold on what the potential of the tall building is and its relationship to the connections it can make is an important thing. <laughs>